Summary, The Mastery of Love, A Practical Guide to the Art of Relationship, Don Miguel Ruiz. Book link click here a man is deeply moved by a master's words of love and wisdom. He invites the master to his home to share a meal. The master accepts the invitation. The man eagerly prepares a lavish meal and gifts to share with the master. When the master arrives late, the man opens the door to find a starving older woman. Though disappointed it is not the master, he feeds her his meal. Next a thirsty traveler arrives. Again disappointed it is not the master, the man gives him the wine prepared for the master. Then a freezing child arrives. The man gives the child the clothes he intended as gifts for the master. The master never arrives. The man is disappointed but forgives the master, trusting he had essential reasons for not coming. Book link click here that night the man dreams the master did come after all. The master says that by providing for the hungry woman, thirsty traveler, and freezing child, the man was providing for the master, because the master lives with it everyone. The man wakes up happy at the lesson the master taught him through this experience. The lesson is that the master, love, lives within all beings. By serving others with love and compassion, we serve the master. The story illustrates the Toltec lesson that we are all one, and by serving others we serve God or the divine. The master represents unconditional love, and when we act with unconditional love for others, we honor that within ourselves and them. The three needy people represent spiritual lessons providing opportunities to express unconditional love. All humans create their mythology and play different roles in their lives. We master the images we project to others in the world. We have the power to create a reality through our beliefs. We practice being a certain way our whole lives and become masters of those traits, whether anger, jealousy, sadness, or love. The human mind is plagued by a disease called fear which manifests as anger, hate, sadness, envy, and other suffering. This fear causes us to build mental walls and wear social masks to protect our emotional wounds. Our world can be seen as a dream of hell filled with fear, violence, judgment, punishment, and suffering. We create demons in our minds and have learned to dream of this hell. Our true self is love and life but we are separated from that by the mitote or the voices of society, culture and rules we have internalized. The nonsense of human drama and suffering becomes amusing from a higher perspective. Imagine being healed of this emotional fear and sickness while everyone else still suffers. You would have a hard time relating to others and sharing love. You would not take things personally or need to protect yourself but no one else would understand. The message is that we must heal our emotional wounds, remove fear and judgment, drop our social masks, and reconnect with our true loving nature. However, this is difficult when surrounded by a society still trapped in the hellish dream. Love and understanding are needed. Humans are born with a healthy emotional body that allows them to live in the present moment, express themselves freely, and perceive the world with openness and love. Around age 3 to 4, children become emotionally wounded and fearful as they are infected with the fears and beliefs of the adults around them. Adults hook children's attention and program them with information through repetition and reward slash punishment. This leads to the loss of innocence and spontaneity in children. Children learn to create false images of themselves to gain the acceptance and approval of the adults around them. They become disconnected from their true self. These images multiply and become more complex as children enter the outside world. Discrepancies between inner self-image and outer projections lead to self-hatred, low self-esteem, and difficulty adapting. Humans become overly concerned with the opinions of others and rely on external validation. They engage in harmful behaviors to gain peer acceptance and be seen as cool. The emotional body perceives the emotional energies in one's environment and becomes tuned to those frequencies. The emotional energies in a child's home environment shape how they perceive and interact with the world emotionally. Siblings can develop different ways of adapting to the same environment. Fear is the alarm system of the emotional body, signaling when something is wrong. Children naturally stay away from people in situations that trigger fear. However, through domestication, they learn to ignore these instincts. Most human suffering comes from identifying with and defending false images, rather than living from one's true self. Humans become detached from their emotions and perceptions, and instead rely on what others tell them. That covers the fundamental ideas around how emotional wounding, fear, and loss of innocence happen in humans, significantly as children, and how this shapes unhealthy perceptions and interactions with the world. Humans are naturally loving and free as children, but domestication forces us to change this innate nature. We lose our innocence, freedom, happiness, and ability to love. We adopt the unfair and emotionally painful reality of adults. The sense of injustice opens emotional wounds in our minds. Our reaction to injustice can infect these wounds with emotional poison. For example, 
a child may feel a sense of injustice when a parent punishes them for innocently playing and exploring. Their reaction can create fear, anger, shyness, or other emotional poison. Emotional poison accumulates over time through repeated experiences of injustice and wounds. We need to release this poison, often by directing it at others through verbal attacks, abuse, or other means of hooking their attention. For example, a wife may yell at her husband to release poison, then the husband yells back to release both her poison and his own, creating a cycle. We usually direct emotional poison at those we think cause the injustice, but we may target less powerful people if we cannot address the real target. Influential people often abuse less powerful people as an outlet for their poison. No one is to blame for this cycle of poison and abuse. It is a kind of sickness or disease. However, by becoming aware of it, we have an opportunity to heal. In summary, humans lose their innate freedom and happiness through domestication and the accumulation of emotional poison and wounds over time. However, awareness of this process is the first step toward healing. The story is about a man who did not believe in love. He thought love was an invention of poets and religions to manipulate humans. He said love does not exist. The man was brilliant and convincing. He said love is like a drug that makes you feel high but creates a strong addiction and needs daily doses. He compared relationships to that between a drug addict and a provider. One person loves more and the other takes advantage. The one who loves most fears losing the next dose of love and becomes possessive, jealous, and demanding. The one who loves less has more control and power over the relationship. The man said humans call relationships love but there is no respect, love, fear, or control. Young couples make promises to love and respect each other but break them quickly. Their relationships become a war of control and manipulation, with resentment and hurting each other. The summary is that man did not believe real love exists between humans in the way most people conceive and romanticize it. He saw relationships as based more on control, fear, and manipulation than genuine love and respect. The dynamics he described were unhealthy addictive relationships rather than loved ones. His perspective was somewhat cynical but perceptive. The story outlines his reasoning and arguments for why he believed love does not exist in human relationships. The key ideas are, the man did not believe in the existence of love. He saw relationships as power struggles based on control and fear rather than love. He described the dynamics of unhealthy relationships like that of an addict and a provider. He argued that love is an invention and that relationships inevitably break down and become a war of control. His perspective was perceptive but cynical. He gave reasoned arguments for why love does not exist between humans. The man and woman stayed together out of fear of being alone, fear of judgment, and fear of their judgments, not because of love. Love did not exist for them. The man met a woman crying on a park bench because she believed love did not exist. They became best friends who respected and enjoyed each other's company. The man started to think his feelings for the woman were love. He saw love as different from how poets and religion depict it. He felt no responsibility for her or need to blame her. They enjoyed each other. The man's love grew so much that he felt he caught a star from the sky to give the woman to prove his love. However, when he gave it to her, she doubted for a moment, dropped it, and broke. The mistake was the man thinking he could give the woman his happiness. Happiness comes from within, not from another person. They were each responsible for their happiness. By putting your happiness in another's hands, they can take it away. No one can make you happy or know what you truly want. Promises of doing so are bound to fail. Life is made of dreams that constantly change. Your truth is not the same as another's. You do not fully know even your closest loved ones or your past. Relationships involve two people in their unique dreams. They must accept and respect differences. Every relationship creates a living being from the two people's dreams. Like cells in a body, relationships combine to form a larger whole. However, each relationship remains between just two people. The key message is that love and happiness come from within, not from another person. While relationships are built on shared dreams, you must maintain your identity and not make another responsible for your joy or unhappiness. Respect differences and enjoy simply being together. Relationships are primarily determined by emotions, which come from either fear or love. Fear is more common and leads to unhealthy relationships, while love leads to healthy relationships. Fear leads to obligations, expectations, lack of respect, avoiding responsibility, being unkind, having conditions, and being selfish. This creates drama, suffering, and a war for control in relationships. Love leads to having no obligations or expectations, showing respect, taking responsibility, and being kind, unconditional, and generous. This creates healthy, enjoyable relationships. 
we are only responsible for our actions and emotions, not our partners. However, we often try to control our partner out of fear and selfishness, not love and respect. There are two halves to any relationship, you and the other person. You can only control your half. However, we try to control the other half out of fear, creating conflict and power struggles. To have a healthy relationship, we must let go of fear and choose love. This means giving up control, not feeling responsible for our partner, showing them respect, and accepting them unconditionally. This is the only way to find peace and happiness in our relationships. Most people live their lives and relationships predominantly in fear, not love. This leads to drama, suffering, and unhealthy relationships. We must choose to move from fear to love. That covers the passage's critical points regarding fear, love, and relationships. Let me know if you want me to explain anything in the summary. To have a perfect relationship, accept your partner as they are, just like you accept your pet. Keep them like what you want them to be, either love them as they are or do not. Be honest with yourself about what you want in a partner. Look for someone compatible with your values and life goals. The right partner is someone you love as they are, without needing to change them. Moreover, for whom you are also the right partner, as they love you as you are. Explore relationships to find the right match, but know that for any one person, there are many potential partners for whom they would need to be corrected. The key is finding someone for whom you are suitable for each other. Signs of a right match include, wanting to move in the same life direction, being emotionally, physically, financially, and spiritually compatible, loving each other as you are without wanting to change one another, being able to trust each other and be fully authentic. When meeting someone new, they will reveal information about themselves and their dream right away. Pay attention, as this shows you what you would be buying into with this person. Accept them as they are or move on. If you pursue a relationship with them, you cannot blame someone else for being incompatible. The ideal relationship is like the unconditional love of a dog. Your partner loves you as you are, you love them as they are. You can be fully yourself and trust them to be fully themselves. There is no need to be responsible for changing the other or making them into something else. The key message is about authenticity, acceptance, and mutual compatibility. Love someone as they are, not as you want them to be. Moreover, find a partner who loves you the same way. This is the path to a perfect, loving relationship. You should get a relationship partner who matches what you want and need, not try to force someone into a role they do not fit. If you want a cat as a pet, get a cat, not a dog or chicken. Know yourself, be honest about what you want in a partner, and look for someone aligned with that. Please do not pretend to want something else or try to change someone into what they are not. If you choose to be in a relationship with someone who is not the ideal match, accept them as they are instead of trying to change them. Let them be free to be themselves. Otherwise, you will both end up unhappy and inhibited. Have the courage to take a risk on what you want or let go of relationships that do not fit. Do not stay where you are unhappy and it is not working. Move on, for both of your sakes. Accept yourself as you are first. Then you can accept a partner as they are, flaws and all, without judgment. Practice forgiveness and letting go of past hurts. Focus on the good moments you share. Bad moments will happen, but the source of conflict matters. Complex life events are different from disrespect, abuse, and emotional harm. Those undermine the foundation of a healthy relationship. Each person is responsible for their own garbage or emotional baggage in a relationship. Please do not take on your partner's issues or expect them to fix you. Give each other space to work through challenges on your own. Supporting a partner does not mean always being unhappy because they are unhappy. You can be there for them while maintaining your happiness and equilibrium. Your happiness may even help lift them. Do not ruin your partner's happiness because you are in the wrong place. Deal with your issues privately and let them enjoy themselves. Join when you can, and clarify that your mood is not their fault. Humans often have emotional wounds and sickness that make romantic relationships difficult. We tend to be selfish and protect ourselves, even from our partners. However, if we develop an awareness of our partner's wounds and needs, we can create healthy agreements and better communication based on respect and love. This can lead to a happy, fulfilling relationship. The key is finding your voice, stating your needs, and trusting yourself and your partner. The goal should be increasing happiness through more love. See your partner as perfect, and treat them with love and respect. You can only heal your emotional wounds, not your partners. However, by each working on yourselves, a relationship can progress quickly. Eventually, guilt, blame, anger, and sadness can be replaced by openness, sharing, and serving each other with love. Sex should become an expression of love, intimacy, and beauty, 
not control or manipulation. Make agreements to nourish romance and enjoyment. Imagine having a magical kitchen inside that provides abundant love. If you have this, you will not be needy or let others control you for love. You can share love freely without needing anything in return. However, if you are starving for love due to being closed off, you may let others manipulate you with love and attention. You become obsessed with and controlled by the source of that love due to insecurity and neediness. The solution is recognizing the love inside yourself and opening your heart. Stop searching for love externally or needing to control relationships. Share love unconditionally without judgment. Let go of selfishness and the war for control. Many relationship advice books encourage selfishness, not love. However, love is natural. We do not need to learn how to love, only let go of illusions. Stop looking for love outside yourself, it is already within. Love is everywhere, but we cannot see it due to our limited emotional awareness and fear of vulnerability. We are afraid to love because we fear rejection and judgment. We pretend to be what we are, not to gain acceptance from our partner when we do not accept ourselves. The core problem is self-rejection, not rejection from our partner. We can never be good enough for ourselves due to unrealistic societal standards of perfection. We reject ourselves for not meeting these standards. After childhood conditioning, we are no longer good enough for ourselves. An inner judge constantly reminds us that we are imperfect. We cannot forgive ourselves for not being what we wish to be. Changing this self-judgment is critical. Rejection from another does not require self-rejection. There are always other partners who will accept us. It is better to be with someone who chooses us than someone who is obligated to be with us. The focus should be on nurturing our relationship with ourselves through self-love, not selfishness. Self-love leads to inner completeness and contentment alone or with a partner. Healthy relationships are built on a desire to share joy, not possess or control the other. They allow us to play, have fun, and explore, like children. Unhealthy relationships revolve around drama, jealousy, and punishment. Selfishness stems from a belief in a lack of love. When we know our heart is an endless source of love, we become generous and unconditional with our love. This attracts more love in return. We are responsible for the consequences in our lives based on our choices and reactions. Examining these consequences allows us to change our personal dream and become dream masters. Dream masters transform their beliefs and reactions to perceive reality as it truly is, without judgment. This allows freedom from suffering and pain caused by emotional reactions and ego. Seeing without judgment, as in the example of the stranger's insult, allows us not to take things personally and react emotionally. We can recognize the suffering in others without internalizing it. This is key to mastery of the dream. Our reactions and behaviors are conditioned by beliefs and routines that have developed over time. To change, we need to become aware of these conditioning influences and try to choose new responses. Gaining awareness and using our free will gives us power over our lives. We are responsible for our happiness and must honestly examine our beliefs and self-judgments. We often lie to ourselves or refuse to see the truth about situations or people. Opening our eyes to the truth, even unpleasant, is the first step to change. The amount of self-love determines what we will tolerate in our lives. When we love ourselves more, we demand more respect and better treatment. People with little self-love often engage in self-destructive behaviors to numb their pain. Like attracts like. We tend to attract people at a similar frequency or level of self-love slash self-acceptance. As we change and improve, we may need to seek new relationships with people on our new level. Sex is a natural part of life, but humans judge it and make it into something bad or sinful. Without these judgments, we are just another part of nature. We do not need to justify or make right slash wrong judgments about sex or anything else. Things are the way they are. Our bodies are biologically designed for sex, but we manipulate our knowledge and beliefs to judge sex in unnatural ways. The problem is not with sex itself but with our judgments about it. We have many distorted beliefs about sex, relationships, and gender roles that cause us much suffering. These beliefs go against our true nature and sexuality. The body has sexual needs and desires that are normal and unavoidable. However, the mind judges these needs and desires, causing guilt, shame, and conflict. The mind and body have very different needs. The body has basic needs like food, water, and sex that are easy to satisfy. However, the mind confuses these physical needs with its own psychological needs, which can never be fully satisfied. The mind does not have any physical needs. It only has psychological needs like love. However, the mind can survive on fear and other negative energies instead. We must distinguish between the needs of the body and the mind. The body's needs are standard and easy to meet. However, 
The mind's needs are illusory and impossible to satisfy fully. The mind identifies so closely with the body that it believes it has the exact needs. The mind says I need when the body needs it. We have to separate the mind from the body. The mind creates a false identity by claiming the needs and attributes of the body as its own. It asks, what am I? And comes up with false answers like I am a body. We have to strip away these false identities to find our true selves. Our true self is not the body, the mind, the beliefs, the dream, or even the soul. It is something far more profound that can only be discovered by letting go of all we are not. To end the suffering caused by the mind's judgment and control of sexuality, we must stop identifying with the mind and meet the body's basic needs. We must surrender our distorted beliefs about sex and accept our sexuality as natural. In Greek mythology, Artemis was a divine huntress who lived in perfect harmony with the forest. However, when she became obsessed with hunting Hercules, she fell from grace and became a predator. She caused suffering to the forest creatures. Eventually, she regained awareness of her fall and apologized. She became the divine huntress again. The story is an allegory. We are all hunters and prey. We hunt to fulfill our needs but often hunt for things we do not need, like love, happiness, justice, and God. We try to find these in other people, but they are inside us. To find what we need inside, we must hunt inside ourselves. This is difficult because the parasite, our self-abuse and fear-based thoughts, is constantly hunting us. We must surrender to be both the hunter and the prey. To hunt inside ourselves, we must challenge our reactions and change one routine at a time. It is a war against the parasite for inner freedom. Though we may not win, we can rebel by becoming warriors, hunters who hunt themselves. The first step is to become the hunter. We must hunt our illusory needs and the parasite that feeds on them. The truth is the intermediary in this inner war. Real love and fulfillment come from within, not from preying on others. However, hunting inside ourselves is arduous, like the mythical hunt for the magical deer. With awareness and perseverance, we can capture the love within. The key message is that we must turn inward to find what we need rather than searching for fulfillment through preying on others or the external world. By hunting the parasite within, we can rediscover our inner divinity. Though difficult, it is a heroic journey of self-discovery and a path to wisdom, love, and grace. Your body comprises billions of cells that depend on you. You are responsible for all those cells. To them, you are like God. They are loyal to you and work to serve you. You can choose to love and care for them or mistreat them. Your relationship with your body is reflected in your relationships with others. If you reject your own body, you will have trouble accepting others. If you accept your own body, you can accept almost everyone. We have beliefs about what is beautiful and ugly, good and bad. We expect our bodies and others to match an ideal image. However, these are just concepts. True beauty lies beyond concepts. Everything in existence is beautiful. Our opinions of ourselves are more important than the opinions of others. If you believe you are beautiful, the opinions of others will not sway you. You become easy prey if you rely on others to validate your beauty. Many people fear being beautiful due to envy from others or fear of their power. However, envy and fear come from false beliefs. True beauty is within everyone. We resist aging because we believe being old means being unattractive. However, a newborn and an older adult are both beautiful. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Our judgments and beliefs limit our happiness and cause us to reject ourselves and others. Let go of concepts of beauty and see with eyes of love. Love your body and accept it as it is. Allow your body to give and receive love freely, without shyness. Aging is a natural and beautiful part of life. Release judgments and open your eyes to the beauty in all things. Growing up and aging is a natural and beautiful process. We go through different life stages, from childhood to adulthood. Each stage has its beauty. You perceive yourself based on your beliefs. You can see yourself as beautiful at any age or stage of life. True beauty comes from within, not from how others see you. You can honor and love your own body. Perform rituals and practices to nurture self-love and self-acceptance. Treat your body with gratitude and devotion. This will help you feel beautiful from the inside out. How you perceive the world depends on your emotional state and beliefs. You will see the world through that lens if you have fear, anger, or sadness. However, if you have eyes of love, you will see the beauty in everything. You can have fulfilling relationships when you are at peace with yourself. Learn to heal your emotional wounds through truth and forgiveness. Release judgments against yourself and others. See that painful past events are no longer happening now. Forgive yourself and others for past hurts. Do not condemn yourself to suffering based on past injustices. You can choose happiness and peace instead of remaining a victim. 
Open your emotional wounds through truth and cleanse them so you can heal. Let go of lies and delusions about yourself and your past. Face the truth with compassion for yourself and others. Use the truth as a tool to set yourself free from suffering. The truth will set you free. That covers the key messages and themes around finding inner beauty, healing emotional wounds, self-love, healthy relationships, and using truth to free yourself. Please let me know if you want me to clarify or expand on any summary part. The truth is relative and changing. What seems true now may not be confirmed later. We live in an illusory world where it is hard to determine what is true. The author recommends three rules for seeing the truth. Do not believe me. Do not just believe what others say. Think for yourself. Do not believe in yourself. Do not believe in your lies, doubts, and limitations. Most of what you believe about yourself is not valid. Do not believe anyone else. Others lie and manipulate. Do not just believe what they say. Lies require more lies to support them, while the truth stands alone. By not believing lies, one can see the truth. Forgiveness is the only way to heal emotional wounds and cleanse them of poison. Forgive others for your benefit, not because they deserve it. Forgiveness releases you from suffering. It is not easy to forgive only because we have learned and practiced unforgiveness. As children, we forgave naturally and instinctively. We need to rediscover that capacity. Pride and honor often prevent forgiveness. We cling to hurt and injustice to make ourselves seem more important. However, ultimately, we only hurt ourselves further by not forgiving. Forgiveness releases negative emotions and resentment, freeing us from suffering. It allows our wounds to heal. Those scars may remain, the pain fades. Releasing emotions through tantrums or expressions of anger provides only temporary relief. True healing comes through forgiveness. We often suffer to punish those who have wronged us, even if their actions were not directed at us. We behave like children throwing tantrums to get attention. We hurt ourselves to signal to others that they have hurt us, even if we do not fully understand why we feel upset. The solution is to forgive others acting out of their minds and experiences, not because of us. We must also forgive ourselves. To heal, we must pursue truth, forgiveness, and self-love. The truth is that only perfection exists, and we are perfect as we are. We must forgive others who act from their suffering and forgive ourselves for our imperfections. We must love ourselves unconditionally to find happiness. We can heal ourselves and the world with truth, forgiveness, and self-love. We can end suffering by ending the belief in suffering, and we can live in heaven on earth. We choose to suffer or not through the stories we tell ourselves and our choices. Suffering comes from the shared beliefs and experiences of human society, not some ultimate truth. We can choose a new story of truth, forgiveness, and self-love instead. Heaven and hell exist in our minds, not in some afterlife. We can live in heaven or hell based on our choices and beliefs. We continue dreaming after death to release suffering now instead of waiting for an afterlife. By taking responsibility for our lives and choices, we can live in heaven while alive. While humans have primarily created a dream of hell, no one is to blame. Our parents and ancestors did their best to pass on their limited knowledge and experiences. Everything that exists is perfect, even hell can inspire. We are perfect and can view our imperfections and suffering with compassion and wisdom. The keys are truth, forgiveness, and love. Knowledge is limited and shaped by our perceptions and beliefs. It alone cannot lead us to truth or wisdom. Wisdom comes from seeing beyond the limits of our knowledge and beliefs. We seek wisdom and inner freedom to find our true selves rather than living according to the beliefs and programming of our society and culture. Wisdom frees us from that parasite and allows us to be fully ourselves. Becoming wise means accepting ourselves as we are, with all our humanity, instincts, and imperfections. It means living from the heart rather than the head. The wise person does not judge themselves or others. Surrendering our false beliefs and ideas of who we should allow us to become our true selves. This surrender and struggle and suffering, allowing us to live freely and happily. Awakening is like becoming sober in a world where most people are drunk on false beliefs and delusions. We see through the dream but can enjoy it without being attached. We have compassion for those still lost in the dream. The awakened heart expresses divine love, life, and spiritual connection. Miracles become possible. We remember that we are Brahma, divine creative power, and can share that truth with others. Wisdom teachings worldwide point to the same truths, reclaiming our divinity, awakening to love and spiritual connection. We must teach find our way to express these truths through living as artists of the spirit. We are alive through the power of life, God. We forget this but are called to awaken, face our fears, and open our hearts to love, the greatest fear for humans. Doing so allows heaven on earth. The phrase poor me reflects a self-pitying victim mentality. 
the messages and the prayers advocate taking responsibility for your life by seeing yourself as empowered and connected to the divine. Some key ideas, you can transform your life through your beliefs and imagination. You can turn your dream of fear into a dream of love. You are already enlightened and awakened, you have to realize it. You do not need intermediaries to connect you with God because God is within you. Self-love is critical. Loving yourself unconditionally can transform your relationships and life experiences. Forgive yourself and others. See God, or life slash the divine, in everything, your body, senses, emotions, relationships, and the world around you. Develop an awareness of your connection to all of existence. Choices and responsibility, you have the power to guide your life's journey. Make choices based on love instead of fear or other people's opinions. Take responsibility for your happiness and share your love openly. Gratitude, be grateful for life and all of existence. Simply being alive is enough. Relationships, transform relationships through forgiveness, unconditional love, open communication, and seeing the divine in others. That covers the main points and messages conveyed in the prayers on awareness, self-love, and relationships. The theme is empowerment, love, connection, and responsibility. The author suggests cultivating excellent relationships that bring us joy by accepting others without judgment. When we reject others, we reject ourselves. Today is a new beginning, we should start over with self-love, enjoy life, take risks, and open our hearts to love. We should become masters of gratitude, generosity, and love to enjoy all creation.